advanced higher physics, electromagnetism, electrostatics. Part 1, Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law. Electric charge is a physical property of matter, as is mass. A particle with mass experiences a force in a gravitational field, just as a particle with a charge experiences a force within an electric field. There are two types of electric charge, positive and negative. Like charges repel and opposite charges attract. Here we see the field diagram which exists between a positive and negative charge. We see that in the positive charge, the field lines are radiating out from the positive charge and radiating into the negative charge. And that's because the field lines represent the direction a positive charge would travel when experiencing the field. So a positive charge will be repelled from the positive charge and a positive charge will be attracted to the negative charge. Charles Coulomb discovered that the law describes the electrostatic force between two electric charges. And this is very similar to Newton's law of gravitation between two masses, as you'll see. Coulomb's law. The electrostatic force between two charges varies directly with the product of the size of the charges and inversely with the square of the distance between them. This is very similar to the gravitational law, where the gravitational force between two masses varies directly with the product of the size of the masses and inversely with the square of the distance between them. Indeed, this is another example of the inverse square law within physics and is defined by this equation. F is equal to K multiplied by the product of the two charges divided by the radius, the distance between them squared. Where F is the electrostatic force measured in Newtons, K is a constant in Newtons meter squared Coulombs to the minus 2. Q1 and Q2 are the size, the magnitudes of the charges in Coulombs. And R is the distance between the center of the charges in meters. Note the similarity between this and Newton's universal law of gravitation. F is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared, where G is the gravitational constant. Coulomb's law. F is equal to K multiplied by q1, q2 over r squared. So we can see, and remind us from higher and from national five, that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. So unlike the gravitational force, which is always attractive, the electrostatic force can be either attractive or repulsive, depending on the nature of the charges. The constant k in the equation is nine times 10 to the nine newtons meter squared coulombs to the minus two. The constant is usually expressed in the form 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, which is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter. However, although E naught is an important fundamental constant in electromagnetic theory, and you can find this within the data sheet, um, most often it's absolutely fine for you to use K 9 times 10 to the 9 newtons meter squared Coulombs to the minus 2, as opposed to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. In all the examples that you're going to see throughout this video, we will use the permittivity of free space. But that's only because that is what you will see within the SQA marking guidelines, and therefore it's useful to show a, a match between what the SQA is expecting you to write and what we actually get. However, if you use 9 times 10 to the 9 as a value for k, that's absolutely fine. You're not going to lose any marks. You just need to make sure to write down that you are doing that, k as opposed to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So within Coulomb's law, f is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared, which is equivalent to f is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the product of the charges divided by the radius squared. And we see this written in the equation on the equation sheet, f is equal to q1, q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Please note, the epsilon naught is on the data sheet, but you can use 9 times 10 to the 9 as the constant k as a shortcut. Both are acceptable as long as you state that you're using k is equal to 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 9 
when you do your calculations. An example, calculate the electrostatic force between two 4 nanocoulomb positive point charges separated by a distance of 8 centimetres. Things to note here. When you're doing this type of question, quite often the charges are stated in terms of nanocoulombs, which is times 10 to the negative 9, or possibly even smaller. Also, the distances are often written in centimetres or even millimetres. You will need to make sure to convert nanocoulombs to coulombs using scientific notation and centimetres into metres before attempting any calculations. Remember, light charges repel, so the force is going to be outwards. Your answer should have been 2.25 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. And remember, this is a very, very small force because they are very, very small charges. Just like in a gravitational field, if you were to measure the gravitational force attracting you to another mass, you would find that it's generally very, very small because your mass is small. Electric field strength. It's very similar to gravitational field strength, where G is the force per unit mass in a gravitational field. G is equal to F over M. G is measured in newtons per kilogram. In an electric field, the electric field strength is the force acting per unit positive charge placed within an electric field. And we have a similar equation. E is equal to F over Q where E is measured in newtons per coulomb as opposed to newtons per kilograms for the gravitational field strength. If we have a look at this diagram of a point positive charge, we see the radial field going out from the center of the positive charge. And we see a point at infinity. Therefore, we can say the electric field strength at a given distance r from a point charge is given by E is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Electric field strength tends to zero as a distance tends to infinity, similar to what we saw in gravitational field strength. This is another example of the inverse square law. Electric field diagrams. In electric field diagrams, the direction of the arrows shows the direction of positive charge of movement placed in the field, as we described earlier on. So we see around a positive point charge, a radial field acting out the way as a positive point charge would be repelled from it. And for a negative point charge, we see field lines going in the way as a positive charge would be attracted to it. You must also be able to describe and draw the field lines that would exist between two opposite charges, two like charges, a point charge and a charged plate, and two charged plates. So diagram one is the field that would exist between a positive and a negative charge, or opposite charges. Diagram two is the field that would exist between two like charges. Diagram three, between a point charge and a charged plate. And diagram four, between two charged plates. And that's our uniform field. Please take note that the distance between the field lines gives an indication of the strength of the electric field. The closer the field lines are to each other, the stronger the electric field is going to be. So we see the inverse square law working here. As the field lines become more and more separated, the further away from the point charge you are. Electric potential, V. Electric potential is defined as being the work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinity to a point in the electric field which is similar to the definition we have for gravitational potential. V is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R. And we can get this equation from the integral of our previous equation for the force. Note V could be positive or negative depending on the size of the side of the charge producing the field. So unlike the gravitational potential, which always has a negative because it's always an attractive force, here, we have a positive for a positive charge and a negative for a negative charge. The equation for electrostatic force, electric field strength, and electric potential are very similar to the equations used for gravitational force, gravitational field strength, and gravitational potential. Essentially, they are the same equations, 
but with different symbols. Electrical potential energy. The electrical potential energy of an electric charge at a point in an electric field is given by the relationship EP is equal to QV. And we looked at this at both National 5 and a higher level. Remember, at a higher physics, W, work done, is equal to QV. Therefore, we can say the EP is equal to Q, the charge on the particle, multiplied by Q over 4 pi epsilon or R, our potential, giving us the equation Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon or R. Note, this relationship is not on the relationship sheet, but could be asked about in a problem-solving question. Example, calculate the potential energy of an electron in a hydrogen atom if the radius of its orbit is 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. We see E, the electrical potential, is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9, multiplied by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 squared, because the charge on an electron is negative, giving us a negative value for electrical potential of negative 4.3 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Quick word about scalars and vectors. We know that force is a vector and energy is a scalar. However, electric force is the product of that force and that energy. Therefore, electric force is a vector, which means it has both a magnitude and a direction. Electric field strength is also a vector. But electrical potential, because it's simply a, mat a matter of energy, is just a scalar. Electrical potential energy, again, is a scalar. It is important to remember this when dealing with situations with multiple charges that may be, need to be resolved using vectors. It is also important to remember that although electrical potential is a scalar, the electrical potentials could be positive or negative depending on the nature of the charges. So theoretically, they could be in opposition to each other. And you should take them into care when adding them together. A few examples might make this clearer. 2016 paper, question 13. Part A. Q1 is a point charge of plus 12 nanocoulombs. Point Y is 0 0.30 meters from Q1, as shown in figure 13A. Show that the electrical potential at Y is plus 360 volts. So we start with our equation. V is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by Q over R. This is equal to 1 over 4 pi multiplied by 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. But remember, you can use the 9 times 10 to the 9 for this. Multiplied by 12 times 10 to the negative 9, because our charge is in nanocoulombs. Divided by a distance of 0 0.3, because the distance is already in meters, giving you a value of plus 360 volts. The plus is implied because we don't have a negative answer. Part B, a second point charge Q2 is placed at a distance of 0 0.40 meters from point Y, as shown in figure 13B. The electrical potential of point Y is now zero. Now, if the electrical potential of point Y is now zero, that means the electrical potential uh, coming from Q2 must be negative 360 because it balances the plus 360 coming from the 12 nanocoulomb charge. So we can say that V is equal to negative 360 volts. V is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by Q2 over R. Negative 360 is equal to 1 over 4 times pi times 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 multiplied by Q2 over 0 0.4 meters. Q2 is equal to negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 8 
coulombs. Now you're asked to determine the electric field strength of point Y. Well, the equation for electric field strength, E, is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by Q1 over R, which is equal to 1 over 4 pi multiplied by 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 multiplied by our charge, 12 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by the radius of 0 0.3 squared. Giving us a value of 1200 newtons per coulomb. Now the direction of this is going to be to the right because we know that the charge Q2 was negative. Working out that for E2, because this is E1, is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by Q2 over R, R squared. This time our radius is going to be 0 0.4 as opposed to 0 0.3. So that's equal to 1 over 4 times pi times 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, multiply the charge, which we calculated in the previous question, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 8, remembering this is negative, over 0 0.40 squared. This gives a value of 900 newtons per coulomb. Now the direction for this is also to the right. We know it's to the right because it's going in the direction of the electric field. The electric field always goes from positive to negative, and therefore we're going to the right for both charges. So the total cumulative electric field strength of point Y is going to be 1200 plus 900, because they're both going in the same direction, which is equal to 2100 newtons per coulomb. Remember, it's a vector, so we should put in the direction. The 2017 paper, question 11, state what is meant by the term electric field strength. Well, electric field strength is the force acting per unit positive charge. In an electric field. In part B, we're shown a diagram. We have A, B, C, and D, and they're vertices of a square of size 0.12 meters. So we're saying square, so each of the sides are the same. So let's just put that into the diagram here. So that's 0 0.12 meters, and that's 0 0.12 meters also. Two four nanocoulomb positive point charges are placed in positions B and D, as shown in the figure 11a, show that the magnitude of the electric field strength of position A is 3.5 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. Okay, so we're looking for the magnitude of the electric field strength. So E is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Substituting in our values, we get 4.0 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by 4 times pi multiplied by 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 multiplied by 1 over our radius, which is 0 0.12 squared. Now, we have to remember here that we have two of these charges acting uh, on point A. Now, the two charges are acting on point A. They're coming from opposite directions. 
one is with a vector which is going left and up and the other one's a vector going the opposite direction now the vertical components of these are going to add up however because this one is going to the right and this one's going to the left because we say that they're made up of two components the left and right components are going to cancel each other out. Now, because this is a triangle, we can use Pythagoras. Now, remember in Pythagoras, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. In this case, a is representing the hypotenuse, which is going to be our electric field strength along this line. So our electric field length along this line is going to be half of what the total field strength is going to be because they're going to be multiplied by each other. So our total energy is going to be equal to the square root because we had a squared and we want to find a of two times it's b squared plus c squared b and c are going to be equal or times 10 to the negative 9 divided by or times pi times 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 multiplied by 1 over 0 0.12 squared. Plug all that in and you get a value of 3.5 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb as required. We're now told that a plus 1.9 nanocoulomb charge is placed at position A. We need to calculate the magnitude of the force acting on this charge. Well, that's quite straightforward. We have the equation uh, F is equal to QE. And we've just worked out what E is. And even if we didn't have it, it's already given to us in the question. Uh, our charge is 1.9 times 10 to the negative 9 because it's nano multiplied by our electric field strength of 3.5 times 10 to the 3 given to the value of 6.7 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. We now need to state the direction of the force acting on this charge. Remember, I have a force which is going to be acting at a vector which is made up of a right component and an up component a force which has got a vector of a left component and an up component, the left and the right are going to cancel each other out. And so the overall direction acting on this is going to be up. So we're now told that a fourth point charge is placed in position C, so the resultant force on the charge at A is zero. So remember, we have a charge here of 1.9 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. Uh, we want to know this point charge. We're told that the overall resultant force at position A is going to be equal to 0. First thing we need to find is what the radius is going to be. So because we can say that this is triangles, Uh, this side is 0 0.12 meters and this side is 0 0.12 meters. We can then use Pythagoras in order to work out the radius. And we say that the radius is going to be the square root of 0 0.12 squared plus 0 0.12 squared, which is going to be equal to 0 0.170 meters. We then apply the equation for force, F is equal to Q1 Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by r squared. Now, we're told that we have a net zero force. So that means that the force acting from the charge at point C has to be the equal in magnitude and opposite in direction as the force coming from charge A. So we'd already worked out the force on the previous slide and that's to be 6.7 times 10 to the negative, neg negative 6. So we can say 6.7 times 10 to the negative 6 is our force, and that's equal to 
1.9 times 10 to the negative 9 as our charge at point A, multiplied by our unknown charge, we'll call it Q2. Divide that by 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, multiplied by our radius, which you just calculated, 0 0.170 squared. Plug all the numbers in, rearrange for Q2, and you end up that Q2 is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs.